so far, all of the kinds of data that we've talked about have been single atomic things. Things like numbers, or strings, or booleans, or images. Things where there aren't any individual pieces inside a piece of data. Today, we're going to talk about structures, which are a way of packaging multiple pieces of data together to form one larger piece of data. We'll start with a simple example, an address. If we want to define a data definition for an address, we start it like this, as with all the other data definitions we've seen. An address is, and now we have to describe something here. That something is how to put together two pieces of data, say a house number and a street, to form an address. And we will put that together with a function that we're going to create called make address. As we always do, when we use an operation, we start it with an open parenthesis, then we write the name of the operation, like make address, and then we put it, describe what we put in to an address, such as a number for our house number and a string for the name of the street. And then we follow with a closed parenthesis. Now, where does the make address function come from? Does Dr. Rackett and the beginning student language already know about it? Unfortunately not. That means we have to tell it that we would like to create the make address function so that we can put together numbers and strings to make addresses. To tell Dr. Rackett and beginning student this, we use the define struct operation. Now again, we start all our operations with an open parenthesis. And as you see here, I've automatically inserted the closed parenthesis that matches it. And then I'll write define dash struct. And then I'll put the name of the structure. Here, the name of the structure is address. And then in between another pair of parentheses, I will write down the pieces of addresses. Addresses might have a number and a street name. We'll call the house number number and the street name street. Now that we've done this, we can click the run button and we can start to use the make address function. So let's try using it. Make address and we'll use the address of Luddy Hall, which is 700 Woodlawn Avenue. Now, we can also create other addresses and they will be displayed in a similar way. You'll see that Dr. Rackett already knows how to display addresses that we type in at the interactions window. So we can use another address uh, say house, so that's also an address, and then we can use <coughs> uh, yet another address uh, that we might make up. Uh, say one and then park place if we're in Monopoly. So those are three examples of addresses. When we create new data definitions like this, it's often useful to start by writing down some examples of using that data definition. So, and we can save those examples up here in the definitions window. And now when we run our definitions window, we can use Luddy and we can use White House. Now, what happens if we want to extract some information from one of these addresses? As we said at the beginning, the whole point of a structure is that we can take multiple pieces of data together and 
combine them into one larger piece of data. So what happens if we want to get out the number 700 from Luddy? Well, turns out that when we wrote down this define struct, we got more functions than just make address. One of those functions is called address-number, and it gets out the house number from an address. We can use it like so. Address-number of Luddy, and as we expect, that produces the number 700. Similarly, we can use address number to get 1600 from White House. Of course, we get a similar function to get out the street name for various addresses, and that function is called address-street. And if we use it with Luddy, we get back Woodlawn Avenue. With that, we've really seen all the key pieces of putting data together and taking data apart when we put it together into structures. Structures can be used for lots more kinds of data than just addresses, though. Let's think about some other examples and uh, consider the example of a point in space. Usually, we think of points as having x and y coordinates. So we will define a structure called a point, and it will have an x and a y coordinate. Now, what sorts of things are we going to put in for the x and y coordinates? Well, we, they could be GPS uh, values. They could be uh, latitude and longitude. But we're just going to think of them as numbers. And that means that we're going to write down a data definition for points, which will describe both x and y as numbers. A point, therefore, is something that we put together with make point and two numbers, number, number. Given that, we can now create points ourselves in the interactions we have. The point zero, zero is often called the origin but we can create the point 1, 10, or the point 5 and negative 5. And we can define examples of points as well in the in definitions for that. Of course, we can also extract the components of points, just like we did with addresses. That uses functions called point-x and point-y. And if we use point-x with origin, we get zero. If we use point-x with make point of 100, 100, we get back 100. And if we use point y, with make point 100, 1000, we get back 1000. Just as a quick tip, the keystroke that I used to get the previous thing that I had typed in in the interactions window is control and then the up arrow, or if you're using a Mac, it's command and then up arrow. Those are the basics of creating, defining, and accessing values in structures, and we're going to be using structures lots more throughout this course.